Okay, back to Physio X10, exercise five, and on to the last activity, number seven, compensation and pathological cardiovascular conditions. So we're gonna look at, we're gonna use the same setup that we've used in the last two activities, activities five and six. Uh, we're gonna look at aortic stenosis or shrinking the diameter, the radius of the aorta. So that right side uh, flow tube will decrease uh, the radius of that. Um, we'll look at uh, how we may uh, compensate for peripheral resistance changes, um, changes in afterload as well. So anyhow, afterload, remember, is that pressure being placed upon uh, for instance, the aortic valve from blood that's contained within the aorta. Uh, so we could compensate for a change in afterload by increasing contractility. So how do you overcome uh, the pressure uh, of the afterload? You increase the strength of contraction. Okay. Another way you could do that is by increasing uh, that's going to increase cardiac output because strength, uh, stroke volume will go up because contractility uh, went up as well. Myocardium gets thicker, um, heart gets stronger. Um, so anyway, we have plaque in the arteries, athero or arterial sclerosis. Um, okay, so we're going to look at three different compensation mechanisms increasing the left flow tube radius. So if we decrease right flow tube, maybe we can increase the left flow tube. Um, so the body, if we decrease the, the amount of blood going there, the, the right flow tube or the diameter through stenosis, the body will respond by thinking, well, maybe if I just send more blood to the heart, so I increase uh, the preload, maybe that will help uh, move the, you know, get the appropriate amount of blood moving to the body systems. Um, yeah. So maybe, maybe not, it will do that, but that's not, I'll tell you right now, I have to spoil the fun of this activity, but that's not the best way uh, of doing it. It's not the body's preferred option. Uh, we can increase contractility. Um, or we can decrease the pressure in the right beaker or decrease the afterload. So um, if the diameter on the right side uh, or the radius on the, the, in the aorta is, is we're in aortic stenosis, uh, maybe we can just pump harder, get the stroke volume to go up. That'll do it. Well, that usually is going to cause an increase in pressure, uh, pump pressure, Increase, increasing contractility usually leads to an increase in pressure against the arteries. So, um, again, maybe not the best bet. Uh, and lastly, decrease the pressure in the right beaker. So, uh, in other words, that systemic blood supply, if we can decrease the pressure, we decrease the afterload. So, we decrease the amount of, 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 um, push against that aorta, therefore we could decrease contractility, decrease um, uh, some of the uh, force of contraction. Okay, So that's going to be uh, a, a better option probably than those other two. So anyway, we'll go through, we'll get through it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one. It's uh, you're going to do these, of course, on your own, but I do want to go through them uh, with you anyway, um, just so you, you know uh, what to expect. So anyway, uh, so we've got the left beaker. So we've got 40, 120, and 80, stroke maximum of 10, EDV uh, of 120, ESV of 50. Therefore, our stroke volume is going to be 70. Uh, left two radius at three, right two radius at three. So everything uh, is basically set to a control or to a norm. So that's what we're going to see. We should see uh, something relatively normal going on. Record data, normal condition, 5086. That number certainly we've seen before. 
70 uh, uh, for the stroke volume, uh, 72.7 beats per minute. We'll get uh, that 5086. Now we're going to refill these and decrease. So we're going to create that aortic stenosis. There we go. Auto pump. So we decrease the radius um, of the uh, aorta. So how is the body going to compensate for, uh, so if we decrease this, we increase resistance. Um, okay. Stroke volume stayed at 70. We didn't touch anything with uh, end diastolic or end systolic volume. Um, so heart was unable to uh, maintain uh, we didn't do anything. We left everything the same. We just decreased uh, the uh, diameter, the radius of the aorta. That caused then a decrease in heart rate, smaller diameter, less uh, uh, amount of blood being able to get uh, where it needs to go. So we see the flow uh, or the cardiac output go down. Uh, the, the heart rate went down. Uh, due to that aortic stenosis. So how can we compensate for that and try to get this number back to 5086? So we need to uh, increase heart rate. So one thing your body is going to do extrinsically is bump that up, but we're sticking primarily with more of the intrinsic aspects. So uh, narrowing the aorta, aortic stenosis, predict, um, decreasing pressure. We're going to try that. We don't know. Uh, we're going to do all three. We can eat. So how, how what's going to be the best way to compensate? Uh, increase the preload. Okay. So we just give the heart more blood to pump and that'll, that'll do the trick, uh, which then will cause, you know, increase in pressure, increase in contractility, just pump harder and that'll get it going. Uh, or can we uh, decrease the pressure uh, over here and decrease the amount of, of uh, afterload and pressure going here, thus decreasing contractility, uh, that's what uh, we're going to predict. Okay. Uh, increase left flow. So the first thing it's going to have us do is try to compensate by increasing the diameter of the pulmonary veins, bringing blood to the heart. So basically we're increasing preload. Increase this, we increase the amount of blood uh, Potentially, um, let's see if it helped with flow rate. Okay, we got a little better flow rate. We got a little better uh, uh, beats per minute. Okay, now we're gonna bump it up to four. So if, if bumping it up to th from uh, three to 3.5, helped why not increase the preload a little bit more and see if that helps sure enough we're, we're going up a little bit okay 4.5 and again this is going to stay at 70 how do we get that 700 or how do we get 70 uh, stroke volume uh, every time? Well, again, uh, oh no, I didn't record data. So let's see. Oh, it recorded it for me. Okay, so 5.0. Uh, oh, it's at the hands probably having us. Let's see. Up, um, Oh, so that's all we had to do. We need to decrease this back to three. Okay, so that's enough with um, increasing preload. So we have some data uh, that shows, again, we had a, a little bit, uh, didn't quite get to the flow rate we wanted. Okay. So now we're going to try and increase uh, pressure or increase contractility. So maybe if we just pumped harder, then that will uh, increase uh, 
the the uh, heart rate, thus increasing the amount of cardiac output. So let's see if that worked out. Oof, not much. Thirty-eight twenty-six. So that had less of an effect uh, than increasing the diameter or increasing preload. Okay, so now it wants us to bump it up to, to 140. So 120 to 130 worked a little bit, but still not much. Maybe if we try doing it uh, at 140, maybe we'll see better results. So 4270, but pretty much the same as bumping this up to a four uh, diameter. I keep saying diameter, radius. Okay. Oh, that one wants us to go next up to 150. So maybe 150 will get us balanced out. But boy, look at that blood pressure. 150 over 80. Ouch. Uh, so you, you see that compensatory mechanism does work. Uh, it's still not, not getting us to, to 5,100. So uh, we're still about 500 milliliters per minute short or a half a liter short per minute. So not horrible, but look what we had to do to get there. We had to get that blood pressure all the way up to 150 uh, over 80. Okay, so let's, says we want to bump that back down. So now what we're gonna do is try to decrease the afterload or decrease the amount of push back against the uh, aortic valve. We'll just drop it down 10. So that should increase uh, contractility a little bit. We should see uh, heart rate going uh, up okay? uh, from 47.3. Remember, we started here at 47.3, and that got us up, uh, decreased the afterload, worked a little bit. Okay? Generally, we've seen uh, these all working a little bit. However, 38.26. Thirty-eight ninety-two. So their first step, uh, generally, we saw uh, about the same uh, amount of uh, change going on. So the that's, we're going to get a little bit more dramatic of a change. Let's try our second uh, level of uh, decreasing afterload and see if that gets us a little bit closer to fifty-one hundred. So we had forty-two seventy and 42.56 for our second rounds, okay, 42.70. So now let's see if 50, so again, 120 over 50, so that's that 70. So what we're, we end up seeing, uh, we're seeing the same numbers, 42.70. Uh, so is it gonna be, 46.56, sure enough. Okay. So we see the same numbers uh, going on here. If we, whether we increase this and, de and left this alone, whether we left this alone and decrease this, remember that, that change in, in the systolic or that difference uh, between systolic and diastolic uh, is, is generally uh, a 40 difference. Okay? We see a 70 difference. Now, what is the body going to prefer to do? Make the heart beat, fat, beat harder, more strength of contraction, or are we going to try and decrease afterload? Um, it's going to be a little bit easier to decrease afterload um, 
to compensate. So you'll be asked that, I think, in one of the review questions, which uh, compensatory mechanisms seem to be the better option. Well, these were almost equal, really, um, but uh, what we, we prefer to do, usually the body prefers to do, is decrease uh, afterload. Okay. So uh, anyway, um, what are we doing here? Oh, what do you think will happen if the pump pressure and the beaker pressure are the same? So if we make this 120 and this 120, what's going to happen? Probably nothing, I would imagine. So let's find out. 120. Auto pump. And sure enough, insufficient driving pressure. So um, they balance out and we can't, uh, you're not going to get anything moving. Okay, so if we increase afterload to being equal to uh, the pressure in the ventricles, we're not going to get anything happening. So that's it. Uh, again, submit, submit. You can view your results. Answer these uh, questions. Okay. okay, and then submit. And again, we've gone through it. I'll do it one more time. Okay. Hit OK. Type your name. Hit Print. Save as PDF should come up. And there it is. Click Save. And now you've got all seven. And I know that that, that does seem like an awful lot. Uh, but uh, um I think these activities are extremely uh, helpful and very valuable for driving home some of the key points of this uh, particular cardiovascular physiology unit. Stay tuned, uh, I'll be adding exercise six, uh, activities one through five um, in the next day or two. So um, if you ever have questions on PhysioX, how to answer the questions or, or uh, anything re regarding uh, clarity re with the activities and the experiments themselves or any of the, the your review questions, please let me know and uh, I'll, I'll help you out. So um, have a great day and I hope you enjoyed uh, these uh, PhysioX Exercise 5 uh, cardiovascular dynamics activities.